producer of Levitt Scotch is what it's called. The Glen Levitt twelve year single malt scotch. Sponsored by Glen Levitt. Only cost seventy nine ninety nine ninety nine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> repeating. Hello, welcome to another episode real I just drank too much Levitt or Scotch. <laughs> Hello. I'm, uh, I'm your host, uh, Daddy Dilf. This sounds like your childhood. You might be, you might be a, a sad boy like me. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, mine didn't sound like that. Stefan Weber here, <laughs> and today filling in for Sean, we have Steve O. Ah, oh, his fucking camera got all fucked. <laughs> 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 Let me fix that for you. We didn't need him. We got a new guy. The yeah. slime. <sighs> here, your least favorite host is not here today. Uh, <laughs> he snuck that one in uh, last week. I didn't notice. He was like, and then, and your favorite host, Sean Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking, you suck, cucka. <laughs> we gotta Can't. get, we gotta get just like a laugh track or something. I did have a laugh track, but it didn't really go over that well. Oh. So, uh, I wasn't really a fan of it. <laughs> so fucking uh uh stefan with the hockey practice today or was it yesterday yesterday, yesterday. yesterday. fucking hockey hair kentucky waterfall actual oh no this is is this from kentucky <sighs> no it's scotch <laughs> Doesn't, so that automatically means it's from scotland i guess maybe i don't know what i'm doing dude we went to um a brewery place that's in southridge mall they literally have like a brewery in there it's in like a, a little restaurant. restaurant but they like make their own beer and shit too like explorium brew pub scotch means it has to be from scotland i believe so yeah you think so i think we I moved think on that's from what that. constitutes <laughs> what scotch okay. is i don't know i don't really care i'm just ba- drink it basically uh there was like a clear glass window and they were doing the brew things and the brew nerds were like going <laughs> in and out of there and steve-o said to me it was like those Bruner. dudes literally look like people who would fucking brew <laughs> like, like craft beer and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like there's like four guys that all walked in and I'm like each of those dudes, man. Like <laughs> I brewed my own beer once. Yeah, yeah. how'd that go? Oh look, the cat. Oh, you didn't have any. <laughs> you didn't have any. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. You you put whiskey in it and <laughs> yeah. like you could only drink one and it would fuck you up. Dude. Yeah, it was I good. was shit housed after it was, that. It was like a bourbon barrel stout. It was good. Yeah, it was pretty good for your first brew. Didn't you get help from Brittany's dad? Something. Like yeah, that? he's the guy who gifted me that mm. this bottle. Because that's what we put in it. We put this bottle in Yikes, the beer. Dude. <laughs> Yikes! Whole yeah, bottle we were, went in that batch. We were all shit faced at a summer solstice for that one. Yeah, I think there was a shot and a half in each beer. Oh yeah, I remember that. Fucking that was the day that you rolled down the fucking hill and got like inch long thorns in your legs, right? Yeah, I've and you got down lost. That, I've round. I've rolled down the hill a couple times. But that time, I was pulling out thorns when I got home. I, I was just... I didn't... I did get lost. What happened was... You got separated from the group. The group The group was like, oh, it'd be so funny if you walk down... Because uh, there was a huge festival. So the sidewalks had like power cables. I mean, you could definitely still walk down the sidewalks, but they were basically behind like food trucks and stuff. I was like, oh, it'd be so funny if you walk down the sidewalk. And I was like, it's more efficient. So I just walked down the sidewalk while everyone was crammed through the streets. And I got to the end of the street and i was waiting for them to come up with the crowd and i saw the paraplegic guy who was like behind us come through the crowd i was like great they went somewhere else and i wandered around my phone was dead his phone was dead we're trying to fucking find him so i walked like six miles home or whatever (laughs) and uh when he got home he had fucking like he rolled down this hill and in the moment i was horrified because stefan looked like he couldn't stop and he was just gonna keep rolling into the street and there were cars coming i was like no no i'm a friend this is how it ends (laughs) no yeah he just ended up getting like fucking inch long thorns embedded in his fucking flesh jake slid down that hill that day too there was a different hill that he slid down because his boots had no tread on them (laughs) He's yeah, like he's got those shaved down docks. Yeah. They have like they're completely flat on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that kid fucking walks. It's like yeah. masochistic how much fucking Jake likes to walk. So I stay so lean though, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fucking, I swear to God, we must have walked like somewhere between like five and seven miles just with him. That like we walked out there and then right. we met you there and then we walked back and I was just fucked the next day. Dude, I remember that summer solstice thing like I was uh, packing around or whatever. I had my uh, laptop and shit 
and we went and like we walked your fucking dog and i didn't know that we were going back to your house so i was like oh great i could have just left all this shit at your house by the end <laughs> like the next day my fucking stomach was just like so tense i thought like i was gonna die <laughs> <laughs> well i'm gonna i'm gonna be sore tomorrow after the hockey stuff so I, i'm I sore today so. shit I i'm already I sore be. What did yeah, you do? I busted my shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I was skating board. around yesterday. Default with down, go boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said it earlier. He's like, maybe I just don't know how to bail. Maybe I need to fall more. <laughs> it's just Learning how stuff. to bail is a thing. Though. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I just don't have it anymore. Like, I used to just be able to, like, jump off and, like, just slide a little bit. This time I stepped off the one wheel and, like, put one foot out, hit my foot way too hard on the ground and, like, rolled so hard that i was back on my feet like head over heels <laughs> and i was just like back on my feet like what uh, the you? hell it's like uh when that there's a video of a guy on a motorcycle getting hit and then he like does a backflip and yeah. lands on the roof yeah. of <laughs> that car in russia does like a full spider-man flip yep but yeah it's kind of pathetic like watching steve-o just like it's just like oh i'm too out of shape to ride an electric board that does all the work for you, <laughs> you know, like leaning on the one wheel man like your back leg always hurts on that fucking thing no it doesn't well, maybe it's my it doesn't nerve. always it does not always hurt yeah you just gotta you just gotta get that thing in shape man insurance kicks in on the first and by yeah. thing i mean your ass <laughs> <laughs> so just go go buy some leg weights your or insure something. Yeah, my insurance kicks in on the first. I'm finally being a big boy. Here's oh, to being no. a big boy. Ooh, <laughs> ah. to, to big men. <laughs> big men. Ugh. So yeah, we went uh we went knife shopping today. Is that where you got this bad boy? Oh yeah. It's an it's a nice, nice piece. It is nine so ninety nine. Nice buck knife. <laughs> nine ninety nine. I've actually I've never or I've never owned like a nice knife, but now that I'm gonna cuts be like, right through aluminum, <laughs> <laughs> cuts right through the bone and the cartilage and the and the muscle. And now we'll do the boot with a piece of ham in it. <laughs> <laughs> steak in the boot. <laughs> fucking steak in the boot. That was my first exposure to H three H three was the fucking uh, the sword salesman guy, <laughs> and he just lops off the fucking Doc Martin boot, and there's steak on the inside. <laughs> and fucking Ethan Klein called it right. He's just like, ah, what the fuck? There's steak in the boot. You're doing just doing that to fuck with me, man. That's like Bud K. The, the Bud K catalog stuff. They used to have the infomercials like yep. late at night, just like. Buy this authentic samurai sword. It's like got a screw hilt. Get this just cling like on that. bat left. <laughs> yeah. And then they just go chopping stuff. They actually have that. Uh, <laughs> they actually have a show on Discovery now where the guys make swords and they go through like ninja warrior cutting courses. And then the last challenge is always some something like a piece of paper like something easy to cut Dude. but it'll be like cut through this this construction barricade and then it'll be like swing in and then chop this seesaw in half <laughs> like just crazy stuff okay here's the scenario you're at a child's playground <laughs> and there's a seesaw your enemy's on the other side <laughs> Dude, all those fucking shows where it's like, who would win, this warrior or that warrior from the past? All those shows are just like, my dad could beat up your dad. <laughs> Deadli yeah, Deadliest Warrior. Deadliest Warrior, yeah. And, and then they like started doing like historical figures. I think one of them was like Genghis Khan yeah. versus George Washington or something. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh, I wonder who's going to win, the dude with cannons or the guy with horse archers? What is this, fucking non- claymation celebrity death match <laughs> although a really funny one it was nazis versus the Viet Cong. <laughs> the, the nazis actually won <laughs> i would oh really yeah because they had flamethrowers oh but i thought get them right out of those but they have the ho chi minh trail man i don't know you're gonna have to write in to the show that's how does that work anymore. america I want to dispute this <laughs> america beat the nazis and they we couldn't beat the vietnamese man I don't, What's I the don't logic know. behind that? I don't know. You're going to have to write in or watch the episode. <laughs> <laughs> right into their P.O. box. <laughs> I'm going to dispute your episode where uh, you put the Nazis versus the Viet Cong that, and the Nazis won. <laughs> that aired six years ago. <laughs> it's it's really not uh, accurate. <laughs> it's really not that good. <laughs> 
That show is so I like I got sucked into a couple episodes of it and then I was just like, wow, this show is fucking dumb cuz it's not really accurate. Yeah. What the Deadliest Warrior show? Yeah. Oh, I just, saw like every episode of that yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was like Knight versus Pirate. I think they had one it was Spetsnaz versus it was like seals yeah, or something. Seals, maybe it was uh, Israeli I think it commando. Yeah. Okay, how about this? How about um, dude with a fedora and a katana versus guy in bark bike armor with throwing stars? <laughs> I I think this is going to go to a suggestion box, Deadliest Warrior, <laughs> recurring weekly theme. Right? I like bike armor guy. I think he's got a really good odds. Yeah. Oh, wait, are you talking know, like man. cycle no, star? It, you talking like a cycle star get up? Like he rides the ten speed? Are you talking motorcycle? Motorcycle, motorcycle like dudes just gonna blade. Whoop his ass. I'm talking blades armor, and he's got ninja stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna whoop <laughs> Fedora's ass. No, but he can. He'll just the Fedora guy will just teleport just, behind him and, <laughs> and deflect the and star just whisper in his ear. <laughs> Nothing I'm personal, really nice kid. guy. No lady. Nothing personal, I'm a nice kid. Guy. <laughs> I'm a very nice guy, and I'm not going to kill you, but I totally could. <laughs> but I'm not, because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I th- I feel like this could be a re- reoccurring work- weekly theme. Workly. Right. Weekly theme. <laughs> that guy would just be, like, in his backyard, like, with a bunch of watermelons, like, trying to teleport behind them and just, like, throat slitting them. And he's just, oh, yeah. What about number one dad grill? <laughs> no, dad number, grill number one my dad versus your dad's grill versus <laughs> i was gonna do fedora guy but i think he just trumps everything with his teleportation ability uh fucking how about grill dad versus biker dad and not like <laughs> not like cool biker dad like a uh, weekend hobbyist Oh, like he Brought rides a like Harley. a big... Um, yeah. yeah, okay. Or uh, he, he rides a Honda Gold Star. Yeah, that was just, <laughs> with that's a what fucking, I was going to say. With a, like a, a visible microphone. He British front. Knight's <laughs> shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> Who would win? Uh, I don't know. I think Grill Dad. He does have a spatula. <laughs> he does and have, it's, it's serrated on one side, too. He does have more money for a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I could just imagine that, like, going down in a jousting situation where the dude on the gold star is just fucking galloping towards him. <laughs> and fucking Grill Dad just dumps over the Weber grill and spreads hot coals all over the place. <laughs> and his tires. fucking tires just <laughs> explode. I, I was picturing him getting stuck in mud, but I like the hot coals just blowing out his tires. <laughs> Fuck that dude! That thing can't get anywhere near mud, man. You just put that thing on like dirt, and it'll sink in, man. Those things are huge. Yeah, they're big baggers, dude. dude. <laughs> like that, is, that shit's so sketch, man. Like um, a friend of mine from the past, Brendan, Brandon. He his dad was short. He was also a short man. He had a fucking Honda Gold Star, and he said, "When my dad gets on this thing, like, and he stops at a stoplight, he's literally on his tippy toes, like, trying to fucking hold this thing up." My I was my granddad had one there. Uh, yeah, he was always on his tippy toes with him and stuff. Yeah, I was watching a shorter guy on a motorcycle, and he did he did the full dismount at every stop sign because he couldn't <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't tippy toe it. He did the foresight. Dismount. I bet he fucking like bought the thing before he even sat on it, and then he's like, "Well, I got to make this work now." So I'll there just, was like, actually lean a, all the way to one side and just kind of. That's what I think you do, but. This guy was doing the full dismount. <laughs> there was some dude uh, that um, came from a rich family in high school, and like his dad was going to buy him this like Nissan sports car. And uh, they were like, just like they're ready to sign the paperwork. And this dude was like literally fucking a giant. He was like very tall. He had to at least like be six, six eight or something. Yeah, something like okay. that doesn't fit in it is that the kicker yeah they were like oh we should probably like sit in it before we buy it and i was just like what the fuck like that just blew my mind that they were like ready to sign the papers and all that shit and they had you know he was just like i want that one (laughs) before he even fucking gets it and he gets in it they had to fucking not buy it because he couldn't fit i I thought (laughs) i i actually right away i wasn't thinking that your story was going that 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 way i thought it was gonna be he bought a stick shift car and then they left a lot and you just like wrecked the transmission or something. <laughs> I did know a fucking dude who had an automatic <laughs> transmission, but it had like the fucking gears that you could put it in. Like, oh, like the first and second. Deal. 
No, it wasn't like a, a shifter that you could shift through the gears. You could only go into one and two. Oh, yeah. And he like constantly fucking would like start in one, go to two, and then put it in drive and just like gun it. And he fucking just like ruined his shit in like no time. Yeah, you're not supposed to do. Yeah, that. you're not supposed to do. That. Hey, we do oh. someone that used to do that all the time. Uh, I remember like they asshole. had. A, I remember they somebody had a very nice car, and their boyfriend thought he could drive stick, and he destroyed the transmission. <laughs> remember they bought that S the uh, S S T I is that what it's called? The Subaru, yeah, the yeah. W R X. Who was, was that? that? I don't remember. Whoever it is, we can't say their fucking name. So <laughs> I don't want to get beat up. <laughs> remember Tony. <laughs> Oh, they had that super nice car. They traded in that uh, that uh, Harley Davidson like anniversary F one fifty. That thing was super nice. That was like a pimp my ride car. It had like DVD players in the seats and stuff, <laughs> like LED light interior. The shit was so baller, and they traded it for like a sports car transmission rally car. Dude, that did thing not, is a rally. Car. Dude did not know how to drive stick. Every time I got in, the thing was just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just i'm just looking because it it was her car not his i'm just looking at her in the passenger seat oh. shaking my head just this thing is gonna be destroyed i remember in, this yep in under a year dude this whole episode the cats are just gonna be behind you fucking with this curtain <laughs> i noticed that that's already. cool <laughs> people like cats yeah people love them Putin, oh man Putin knows that that's why he played that up i don't oh, know right on the previous on his book. social media right. on the br- bridge thing we Wait, already what? talked about that oh all right never mind if you guys already talked about it then it's like two episodes ago fuck yeah people have already forgot so if you have a point about that i just wanted to say like i hung out with a, i was not into cars in high school and i hung out with a bunch of people who were into cars and there was this dude who did shifter carts and he slammed into a wall so hard that he he got a stutter from it, and he would stutter. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what happened to the like the super smuggler stuff? in Return of uh, Last Jedi? He went to warp so hard that he <laughs> developed <laughs> he a stutter. A stutter. <laughs> but like, okay, the dude with the cart was it like instantaneous? Like he got up from his crash and just was instantly stuttering. <laughs> it was a before and after thing. <laughs> I didn't know him before, but shook, everybody shook said... for life. Right. <laughs> so they were like, yeah, now every time that he gets excited, he fucking, he starts stuttering. So every time he talked to my girlfriend at the time, he starts stuttering. <laughs> like, dude, you got some, some, something for my girlfriend? You seem awfully excited there. <laughs> dude, I was like, we were like comfortable enough in our relationship. We are both, yeah, it's not going to happen. That guy's a dork. He Jeez. means well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was like, hey, hey, st- 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 <laughs> couldn't even get her name out. On the on the whole car guy thing, though, I I kind of wish I was a a car guy because yeah, it's useful. Because it's it's a useful it thing really to be is. interested. Not in. Not if it makes you throw all your fucking money in a pit of car parts, though. <clears throat> That's true. I guess I I didn't really think about it necessarily going that deep, but every time car maintenance comes up, I always think to myself, if I was a car guy. This would not have been a thing. Well, think about it like this. Instead of like, yes, you have to pay like $1,000 for something that you probably could have done for a lot cheaper if you had the knowledge, but you won't be spending multiple thousands of dollars every fucking week, every penny that you try and get. Because that's like what a lot of that stuff leads down for those guys is it's just a really expensive hobby. I just got a room full of rims. (laughs) <laughs> this is my rim room <laughs> it's like what? a walk-in closet <laughs> car rim room fuck. <laughs> welcome to rim room the fuck is going on dude you don't even have enough cars to put these on oh my god just like living in milwaukee man you know, always see it like driving across town fucking big purple piece of shit car with 20 inch rims it's like the 24 yeah the, the like three pink cars we the have slab on them. <laughs> the slabs on them and shit <laughs> oh, what a fucking decision in life that is i mean there was I this wonder if it's one cool. that we used to see coming from like here to your place was it the Stephen. one with the the flames it was, no it was the pink one and they had like the barbie logo on their back windshield it was, and like it was impala, on like right? 26 inch rims yeah, yeah. The impala right yeah <laughs> just ridiculous wow. just yeah barbie <laughs> Like what is going Super on? Super tinted. Dude? I don't even know who was driving it, but great. You keep idea. doing you. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, if that's what you want to do, if you want to fucking keep it pink, you want to fucking take your ghoulie and pimp it out. <laughs> fucking twenty inch rims, man. <laughs> Doesn't um uh, putting like big ass wheels on it like fuck with the speedometer? Yeah. Yep. 
That and uh, over a certain size, I think you actually need a, a CDL. Really? Yep. Wow. At least that's what I was told. I could not imagine getting a fucking CDL just so I could have baller ass <laughs> fucking rims. Yeah, these I have 28s. <laughs> I'd want like smaller rims because then you have a fatter rubber tire. Right. Because when you get to a certain point, your rim is. Your rim is so big and your tire is but so Stephen, thin. You hit anything. They look just... fucking stupid. Well, have you okay? seen this like uh, <laughs> stance shit that all like the tuner dudes are doing now, where they like lean their tires way inwards on top? And oh the rims yeah, stick out. It looks from weird. Yeah. It Especially looks like you have a like broken, super low. Yeah. It's like you have a broken like axle it's or something. So bad, dude. Like, and that's so bad. That one spot that the tire is riding on is just getting worn down. Nothing else. Is there anything? Stick to the low as... riders and the. And I don't that think there's any advantage or anything like that. When it comes to like racing and shit, yeah, but what the fuck do we know? We're not car guys. I I definitely don't <laughs> think that's a Ugh, speak for yourself. I definitely don't think that's a racing advantage because if you wear your tire down in that one spot, you'd just blow yeah. a tire like instantly. You're gonna be in the pit sooner. Yeah, <laughs> D- these people don't have pits. I'm Steve. I know, but if they get to us, <laughs> they get to a certain point, it's just gonna yeah. blow really quickly. Yeah. Uh, actually, this was a uh, something that I heard in the news lately that they're going to start cracking down on illegal street racing in Milwaukee by punishing the people who show up to watch. That's stupid. I mean, I've seen that in dystopian sci-fi films, but I mean, are you kidding me? What is a Sakura? <laughs> like you can't you can't catch the guys racing, obviously. So right. you're just gonna bust people for what loitering? That's a loitering ticket. Well, you know they or do, do they like, have a um, new a new charge that they're gonna drop on you watching street racing i don't know there was like a range of cost I it's forget probably it like um it's loitering right well i don't think it would be that it'd probably be like uh whatever uh but they've been trying to um curb it like the illegal street racing by having like hosting shit at the milwaukee wi- mile every once in a while right and the mayor of west Dallas was straight up they were like showing i think it was an alder woman like proposing it uh but i was like we need to curb this like illegal street lacing in our neighborhood and we suggest we start having like race nights by uh you know the milwaukee mile and then they like literally cut to the fucking west dallas mayor and he's like well let me tell you how that's a fucking dumb idea and how it's not gonna work <laughs> like he was like r- rolling his eyeballs to the extent that i feel like he thinks it's cool and he doesn't really care. <laughs> like, he was like, oh, well, I, I did that. <laughs> like, really, would, do you think West Dallas would fucking elect a mayor that wasn't one of its own? Just a, some trashy no. motherfucker. Right. <laughs> He's just totally a fucking West Dallas. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it's a good idea. I think you should try to give people a place to kind of make support a, their hobbies a use for the mile too because like the mile can't host like nascar races and like big races like that but because they don't have most the of the time isn't it, it? yeah I, I don't actually know but it's empty most of they the time they don't have the seating for it the complaint was um that it would be like noisy the yeah the mile so you is like yeah but it's not always going on that would be like going on like every so weekend then. what I think they the do people that Tuesday. bought the people that bought homes near the mile are going to be upset that there's people racing <laughs> right. there versus but, uh, just them going no, down I think random they already streets do it every tuesday or something like that like street racers down there? yeah hmm. like stock cars like people just come in and do it hmm. i think that's what i was told that seems fucking lame just come bring your stock car around an oval right I mean, that's kind of what like. I'm sorry, Slinger we can't give it. Give everybody an F zero track and then go through <laughs> fucking loop de loops and shit. <laughs> hey man, that's what I fucking want. I want Captain Falcon <laughs> and a fucking Turbo Boost. I want fucking obnoxious MIDI guitar solos, just blasting. Like imagine that, just fucking nonstop. If you bought a place like right up the street from the F zero like, music just forever. every day. <laughs> So you'd just be like, God, make it stop. Make it stop. But and then every once in a while, I'd just be like, <laughs> and then they'd, they'd stop and they'd start playing Steve Vai and you're just like, put it back on, put it back on. But if you bought a place ne- next to the Milwaukee Mile, I mean, that's how yeah, you. you expect. Right. Like, how could you complain? Like, yeah, I bought this place next to the racetrack and now there's people racing there. <laughs> <laughs> that's like having a place by the airport, right? I can understand necessarily not having it disclosed that uh, that the airplanes fly over you for a landing necessarily, right. but if you're relatively close to the airport, I'm sorry. 
Well, yeah, all those homes over there and stuff too, like by the airport, had to install those like special windows in them and stuff. Dude, on my tr- <laughs> windows, don't just on my- blow out while you're watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> on my what the uh, fuck just happened. Trek home last night. I was going through Tosa, and there's this like beautiful fucking house that's like kind of an awkward shape because it's in like a street corner kind of thing. And I was like, oh man, that's such oh, it's a, like built for the corner. Yeah. But th- one side of it is literally a fucking train track crossing. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, that is a fucking awesome house. But because I had to stop there and wait for the train. Fucking... You mean like it, it goes over the train where the train would run? No, no. It's just like on a corner of like a it fucking train junction. Like maybe it was like a stop at one point and it's been modified. No. It's just a house it's in a really a bad house. spot. Yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful house in a really shitty spot. They probably got that land for really cheap, and that's why they could afford to build a beautiful house yeah. there. <laughs> I'm feeling you. I thought maybe it was converted, like it used to be a stop at. I don't know the history of that area particularly, but you know, it, you know, it looked shitty for the in fucking bygone buyer. years. <laughs> in bygone years, it was a train stop. Like when I was living at uh, the extended stay up by um, fucking North Avenue there's a train that ran through there and that was fucking obnoxious oh it's bad i used to live by a train but this is like literally the train is like three feet away from the the wall of this fucking uh, it house. was it was like a block Jesus. away and it would come barreling through it it was always it, it never really it never seemed like it was a consistent schedule it was but it Maybe like once a week at like the wee hours of the morning, it would just be like see that fucking mic discipline there, right? Ah! <laughs> I still <laughs> picked up. Ah! That's what <laughs> I've been working on too. Well, yeah, it's always going to pick up. Like everything that happens in the room is going to fucking pick up. But but uh, just wee hours of the morning, just barreling through. Yeah, the worst noises ever. I mean, I'm not waking up in a cold sweat, just like, oh, what was, what was that? But it was, it was bad. The only the only thing that ever woke woke me up, sorry, woke me up in a cold sweat was the geese. I used to live on the river, and it would freeze over, and literally like fifty to seventy five geese would bat down just during the winter there dude. all night, just <laughs> and then like half a block away, there they installed. Uh, walk crosswalks for like blind people so they beep constantly. Oh, yeah, the, it's like a sonar type and they system. They say like wait, or yeah, something. so that goes off 24 7, it never stops. And then there was the geese honking, so it was just like <laughs> beep, 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 <laughs> walk, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Your mind just gets into a repetition with all of it, like, yeah, many, many bloodshot, uh, eyed nights. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna fucking hear that. You're gonna like go by one that sounds exactly the same, like and a geese, a goose is gonna fucking honk at the right time, and just you're just gonna go into the PTSD sure you're comatose mode. It's like I must kill, I must kill Putin. <laughs> just wake you up, sleeper cell style, dude. <laughs> That's how I feel. Um, uh, every time I, w- I used to be in the main office, and I'd hear the fucking copy machine just start going. I'd just be like, help the moron. <laughs> <laughs> moron need help. Well, that's why I'm uh, thankful where I'm at now cooking. We have screens instead of tickets printing out. Like, I used to wake up sometimes thinking I heard like a ticket printing out. Of, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, did I miss one? Oh, my God. <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have those dreams anymore. Brit might be applying. Yeah? Yeah. It's a good company, dude. That's what, she, that's what I told at her. At that location? Uh, not at that location. Be sure to way closer to you guys, man. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, I can get her in there. That that was mainly for fucking Steve-O because we were playing WoW earlier, and he literally has a fucking, macro. Yeah, a macro to type out "do it" in the chat. Just by I like, have some <laughs> great macros. I I had some great macros in that game. You guys been enjoying your time back? Oh yeah, with World of Warcraft. Yeah. Oh yeah. But you liking the shaman? Um, I haven't been back on it actually. Yeah. I started an undead rogue on a different <laughs> server. And then uh, I've been fun. playing my hunter with his. Uh, yeah, whenever knife. me and Stevo get into it, like we literally just chill in Stormwind or Ironforge and Battle Group. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, that's all there is to do. 
I mean, we could run dungeons and level but a lot that's, faster. That's not boring. fun. I like fucking, fucking people. Boring. Up, yeah. <laughs> I I agree. That's that's how I yeah. like playing the game. I'd sit in I'd sit in town or I'd fly around and do like archaeology stuff because right. sometimes yeah, that's you cool. just like, get to explore. That's you, what I like. Yeah, if you want to go like get a mount or something that yeah. Uh, yeah. you need to do something for do a little mount hunting. I just wanted to say it like whenever I do this, <laughs> I can, like visibly see the the pain. In Stevo, <laughs> yeah. like he he squawks back. <laughs> but yeah, I had the I had the undead rogue that was my last dude. I think he was in the nineties. And then I was playing a lot of Death Knight. Dream I like Death of the Knight. Rogue Death Knight's a good is left Death Knight's a fun 90s. class. I uh my undead rogue, it's like the first horde character I've actually like dedicated to. And uh it's like forty five now. It's fun. It's fun, dude. And they're like Battlegrounds are actually a little different, but like it's just I you get know. to you get to prowl a little bit as the rogue, and it's a lot of fun. You just get to blow people up, and the best part is if you're in a pitch fight, you can escape yep. without yeah, without being be noticed. Like, <laughs> yeah. Vanish, dude. But yeah, his uh, its name is actually Thought Breaker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had the paladin, the shaman too. Paladin will always be my favorite class, but the shaman was a lot of fun. See, I can't play like heavy armored classes like that, dude. I'm just not into the paladin, like the warriors the, and paladins. The DK, and you like the hunter though. Yeah, I like. There's hunters. a D, there's a DK subclass where they summon undead. They're like pets, mm. and you get an abomination pet. I and fucking he has hate a, pet management, so that's just the. One but the pick. but the DK abomination gets a hook and stun, so you have like Ooh. double CC. It is so much fun. People cannot escape from you. You just get to keep wailing on them and right. just. So I wish the, you could teabag in that game because I'd teabag the shit out of those. For people. the sake of our listeners who have no fucking interest in any of this, right? Let's segue a little bit. Like, <laughs> I was gonna say we're gonna out. change subjects. Yeah, uh, we just... I have a segue into stuff related to video games based on the uh, the thing that Steam published, adopting like a laissez faire like thing for what's going to be published on Steam. It came I was on, not aware of this. What's going on? It came on the heels of this video game that was published on Steam that was literally like it was like a shitty game, but it was like a Counter Strike situation where there it's called it was called Active Shooter and it was a school shooter where you either played the school shooter or the police stopped. I have a Whoa. question. I have, no, I, yeah, it's hold on, I have gnarly. a question. <clears throat> Is was this like the uh Okay, there have been a couple games like this. There was one I don't remember the name. Yeah, it was like Rampage or something yeah, like that. But it was it was a uh, just I just dudes in trench I'm, coats. I'm going kind postal. Of thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm going postal. There was the Counter Strike made map that the Columbine kids made, mm. which was a layout of their school. And then obviously you have Payday, which isn't necessarily as bad because you're doing bank heist, but it still is you. Doing, it's putting a mask on and going on a massacre of like police officers and, and hostages shit. if you don't care right yeah but what is what is this active shooter how in depth is that it's pretty i don't know i thought it was like uh, from what i had heard about it it was like kind of like trolly in a nature and apparently the guy who published it was known for doing this stuff in the past but it i kind of agreed with it i thought it was like in poor taste but it, a lot of people got kind of pissed about it because um steam <laughs> it's not it's not accurate enough. no i'm just kidding <laughs> no it, it it's like um the 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 freedom of speech argument which i think is kind of bogus in that aspect because steam is not a government it's a private company and yeah i they think people really forget for that their, yeah but what steam did is they published like a, a very well wrote blog post initially because they're a company yeah and they were like (laughs) weird like we are trying to do what we think is best and the same dialogue that is going on publicly because they're even saying in the blog post that steam is a very large company and the same debate like happens within its ranks and steam's like a really progressive company where they really like value the input of their employees so what they ultimately decided to do was adopt a laissez-faire free market system where now if, if, it, if it rises goes, to the top it rises to the top if it sinks to the bottom it sinks to the bottom but there was like pornographic games and stuff like that like weird shit that like their main body was they were like making a bunch of shit on Patreon and there's like apparently a huge subset of like these pornographic video games that could not get on Steam 
that were existing off of Patreon enough that it's going to be like a sizable chunk of money that Patreon makes. Somebody put it as like Patreon is probably shitting their pants right now because of this, because now all of these games can go, can on, go on Steam. To Steam. But that also means that there's going to be a lot more bullshit games out there that totally suck dong. Right. But like, I, not, you know, I mean, they're just going to be terribly made. Uh, it's a point that Sean had made in the past. If you buy a fucking shitty game off Steam, it's like it's your, your own fault. goddamn fault. Cause you it's get so two easy hours to, to refund out. it. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing too. You do a little bit of research. How long does it take to jerk off in this day and age? Right? <laughs> Steve-O, I feel like you're the expert on this uh, one. <laughs> I mean, I've got some low record times, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> I Yeah, but I definitely think... In a way, I think that's the right way to handle it. There definitely are going to be some serious pitfalls, and it's going to come up in the media again later. Right. But I do think that's the right way to handle it. Is It's time for the individual person to learn how to... <clears throat> protect themselves and it's not necessarily like it, it it's almost like with the current climate of things you would almost think that, that that's been taken away it really hasn't it's just like the, they're like people through the internet are much more in your face and like publicly if people disagree with you they can like gang up on you and stuff like that and sometimes i, I agree with very that well deserved i agree with that sentiment a lot of the t- a lot of times it's just the <laughs> I was actually at work and somebody was just like, oh, all these people are complaining. It's, I told them there are plenty of people not complaining. And the only reason that you're noticing this is because the loud, the loudest people are right. the most, these super vocal people are yeah. just pushing their point constantly. Right. There are plenty of people that don't agree with that whatsoever. Well, like you said, there are plenty of people that are not complaining, but you don't notice it because they're not, not complaining. complaining. Yeah. The silent majority is yeah. what yeah. call it. Uh, yeah. I feel like a, as a game developer specifically, there is a huge portion of that where it's like your vocalist, most vocal critics are going to be just people who have like really shitty ideas and they're just going to fucking balk and balk and balk. And it almost to like the public and stuff like that. And even to like people in there, like it, it seems like, you know, that's what most people think, but it's, it's really not. It's like as, a, the as loudest a, ones. Yeah, it's almost like as a game developer, you have to save like people from themselves. Yeah. Oh wow! Look at that, saving people from themselves. That happens a little too much. All right, we've been talking about ourselves a little bit. You guys have any news this week? Uh, I might. Let me call this up real quick. You got anything? You uh, I, I think we should week, just talk so. about Anthony Bourdain. We already talked about right. it a little bit. What a fucking and sad we had, day. We had total biscuit last week. That was sad. Right. Uh, Bourdain, Bourdain's one that caught me, dude. Like, I, I'm not gonna say like I'm actually like touched and hurt and like I'm. I didn't like, know the guy, right? But I, w- I was definitely surprised. But um, you know, I'm a cook and I like cooking and I l- really enjoyed watching his shit where he went around the world and like fucking. I've read I've read some of his stuff. I did not read Kitchen Confidential, but he's a good writer. Yeah, and uh, and he is definitely that was his breakthrough was the in th- the the. The, the curtain pulled back on reality, which is something that people just love to eat up. Just this is this is what's really right. going on, and there's here's the facade is even with his like shows down. and stuff, and like he was always like really well spoken, and like the way he would oh, like yeah. narrate narrate the way that he like described or whatever, man. Like uh, what I really dug is that he would go into areas that had like rich history and he'd talk about the food and the history of the region. And he would go to like these places that you don't get like celebrity chefs going to because they're literally like filthy holes in the walls. And that's like where the good food is. He wasn't a tourist. Of, right. That's where that's, I like that approach on stuff. I don't it, know. It's very Rollins. Have you guys watched, it's a very uh, Rollins approach to tourism. Did where, you guys try watching ugly delicious? Uh, I watched a little bit of it. Like I didn't get I, super I deep into guy, it. But... I didn't get super deep into it, but it had a very similar approach, mm. where it's just the hoity-toity doesn't necessarily make it better. Right. Getting down to earth. So yeah, let's uh, let's uh, have a little cheers here for a Bourdain. I mean, obviously that one this week hit us a little harder because we've that been was... watching it more. The Katie Spade one. I, obviously, I can't relate to it. I don't really buy handbags right. or women's fashion, but that also was somewhat surprising. And I just want to say, at work, 
like uh, there was a number of guys who were just like, oh, this is so stupid because like they're celebrities. But the reason it's being reported on more is because a celebrity has this picturesque life. Right. It's and it's it's hard to it's think not, that that they're not happy. I yeah. think there's something going on. <laughs> oh yeah. Get ready. No, no like, I'm ready. No, no. no. <laughs> Lay it like, out there. No, no. The shit that we were talking about earlier. Not necessarily. Like <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. There's something up. <laughs> it's a theory. We, we can He's talk about it. it. We can talk it about out. it. We could go there. This is That's all the why we have this, this soundbite. <laughs> well, all the, I want to like, take your hand and say, this is the only judgment you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we need to fill air. <laughs> we need um, to fill time. So. I don't know. There's there's a lot of celebrities like off in themselves. And like we had a discussion earlier about, you know, I'm not saying that's what it is, but there's a lot of like speculation as to that might be like what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think there's something up. You want to say? Yeah, what you, you want to you want to fucking you didn't tell us what? Right. <laughs> what we were talking about earlier was like the whole like um Hollywood pedophile rings and shit, and like the connection with those. I'm not saying like that's what I'm buying into, but like maybe maybe it's a start a part. into like what the fuck is going on or like I don't know. Right, it's just fucking weird. No, uh, you 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 feel that the rich and hoity-toity are carrying on with. Well, he, he said lives. he doesn't feel. He just heard it. It's You've heard, heard it. Okay, that's true. You did well, say like that. I think there's something like underlying to these like celebrities fucking off in themselves left and right. Like yeah, he was saying uh, like uh, potentially like Chris Cornell and uh, Chester from Lincoln Park. They uh, were talking about like, my boy the, Wayne Static. <laughs> uh, he he just died of an overdose though. I he mean, did, he didn't kill himself. I mean, he did kill himself, but basically, I think he knew what he was taking. Right. But they were talking about these like celebrity sex rings and shit and pedophile shit. Well, or that's what people were saying. And then it was uh, Corey Feldman. He was talking about the Hollywood. Well, I mean, when you get that much, that's that. money. I okay. Did you actually watch all the way through Altered Carbon? No, you didn't, because you no, didn't like it. It was terrible. That was like that. That was the ending of it. Was the rich it, and, that's where we got the terminology ninja crap. Yeah, but at the end of the <laughs> show, as a descriptor for like at a the movie end of the or... show, though, that's the whole conspiracy is the rich and powerful are having. They literally have so much All money sorts of weird sex. that they're doing weird stuff. But in altered carbon, it was they're just getting the gratification of actually killing people because mm-hmm. it's like impossible to die right. in that science fiction universe. But it is spoilers. possible to die. It spoilers. Possible. Yeah, if you didn't watch it, spoilers. If you didn't watch it already, fucking don't. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking terrible. I never dude. checked it out, so I was like, I had really high hopes, and we don't really need to go into it because we talked about it. it actually, really I think strong. we talked about it off. I don't know. Uh, uh, it was an old, old yeah, session, old, but old session. it started out strong and it really kind of fell apart. And from what I've heard, it was nothing like the fucking books. bogus. <laughs> Skip it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was just dead air. We just cut all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't. We don't cut anything anymore. I forgot to mention that to you, Steve-O. So you've been good. You haven't said anything fucked up, but uh, we don't edit anything anymore because <laughs> we've been that. we've been practiced now. No, not because like. There's shit you still can't say. Oh, I get... <laughs> yeah. Wait, like... Wh- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of want to talk about how the last session went, because there were some issues, but we'll save that for later. I am going to bring up some more news. Okay. What with all... Of, oh, go ahead. Oh, with all the people we had last time? With all no, the there was a guests. There was a ridiculous recording issue where, for some reason, we had reverb on, oh, on yeah, one of the channels, and... yeah. It was, oh. we had to, yeah, I actually would like to say sorry to those guys. I actually listened to the whole episode. The audio was not as bad as I thought it would be. It was just like when everybody really started like laughing and speaking up, it there was some like, distortion. But, you know, it was better than fucking losing everything. And uh, I also want to apologize because we lost two of their takes for their like where the good take was for their live oh. performance thing. So. But uh, cheers to those guys. Fucking great guests. S and I. Fucking great. S&I. That was really great good. Great guys. I wish we could Lots have kicked it with them later that night, which I guess we could talk about that too. <laughs> Possibly the most fake place I've ever been. Right. Just fucking walk into this. Like, boof, tuk, boof, tuk, boof, tuk, boof. It's literally like stereotypical, like the fucking. Um, uh, yeah, we went to a club and it was just everything was so fake. Like the interior decorations were even super fake. Like once you got a little bit close to them, they had these like opaque plastic screens that were just screwed in with like trim trim screws onto 
onto like pieces of wood and then they had leds stuffed in them to give this like crystal light appearance <laughs> like it Where was, was just this? the lucid lucid this oh, lucid bar and everything terrible. was just so fake and then like the people in there Which were was it, like downtown or the one in south milwaukee the one downtown oh and, and then everyone was everyone was all dressed up like they're gonna go clubbing our bouncer was jason statham with a turtleneck <laughs> like it was all just so but that's the most badass version of statham is when he rocks his turtlenecks back i in actually the day. i actually really liked the security guys <laughs> But once we got inside, it was it was all just like everyone had this facade, and it was just not it's for like, me. Hello, I like Tron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, seriously, I was like having a sensory overload thing just with the sheer volume. Like, I do not mind like loud music. This was like too much for fucking me. I it referred to it as uh, oh. the, the Matrix Revolution club scene. <laughs> <We both laughs> Stupid like, loud, and everyone was like half yeah, naked. Yeah, fucking, you sit, uh, walk to the back of the club, and Christoph Waltz is just like, your balls are in my hands. <laughs> Thanks for me, monkey. <laughs> We've all gone to like metal shows and shit, and those are pretty goddamn loud. So Yeah, but the thing is... I can't imagine you guys like... Being somewhere where you can't tolerate. I feel like I'm in my element there. Right. We she was the real issue there. for me. They were playing the hits from like 2000. Yeah, I they walked in there. I literally said the chronic hadn't even dropped yet. <laughs> did I not say <laughs> when I walked in there? I was like, "What the fuck is this prom?" <laughs> yeah, you said, "What is this prom?" And I was like, "This is 2000 music. The chronic hasn't even dropped yet." They played Jesus. Little John. Yeah, they played Little oh, John, what? dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I like that in an ironic sense, but right. this was not. In an ironic sense. No. These people, it was just. Ugh. It was like the subset of music for people that we would like go to school tan- dances and had poor taste in music then when this like shit was popular. But and like, you ha- know, like what you want to like, but the, I just, I I went there and I could just shit just on tell it. The whole my story. Just shit on just it. tell the whole story about s- going in there? Uh, well, we've even? already told like half of it. The thing is. We got there and it was like a dude's birthday party. They had like this little, like, yeah, they had this little segment in the back that we went back to. And it was literally, I want to describe this when we come up to it. They part these doors, they were made to look like wicker pieces of wood. Yeah, this was like a separate part of the club. They were also very cheaply installed as like a VIP section. This is the nice part. It was also very cheaply installed, like a screen that you pull away. It was supposed to look like birch wood twigs for like this whole wall. And they pull this out of the way. There's a dj a couple people dancing and we walk up and it's like a a a standing table it's maybe like three foot by two foot and it's got it's like lemon it's got like lemonade bottles and it's roped off maybe five by three so it's like super it's a super tight area and there's two women behind this this table right and they were like pouring drinks to like people there how do you know xyz yeah oh i know xyz through a yeah <laughs> and then they asked me the same question it was like oh how do you know xyz and it was like oh i know them through a because <laughs> i was like oh think fast i actually don't know xyz <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i've never met xyz before so come to find out it was like it, we knew it was this dude's birthday party and a friend had invited us just trying to like fill the ranks because nobody we were the was, like, only really people there yeah <laughs> i don't know if it was supposed to be like an exclusive thing for that so Come to find out, this woman behind the the booth is his mother. This is a man. This dude's twenty seven ish. Twenty seven year old birthday party, and I inadvertently think I actually mocked his mother because, like, I was like, I was feeling awkward, and she was just standing there, and she like we locked eyes, and she was just like, and I was like, I just just like mimicking her, like not. That's like the only thing. Yeah, and then she's like, leaves, her. and she's like. Oh, so how do you know? Uh, blah blah blah. blah. I was like, I was like, oh, I don't know him, but uh, blah 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 uh, through through Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Comes the uh, I don't want to go like super. Not even two minutes later, it's just ended. like, oh, uh, his mom wants you guys to leave. Yeah, <laughs> and I I was not privy to anything what's going on. I, and the guy that told me that I was like, you're kidding, right? Like I, I assume this is a big joke. I had a laugh. I like slapped him on the back. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go get another drink. And he's no. His mom wants you to leave. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? We're at a, like a club, right? Like, what? <laughs> so I'm. I, I said I'm gonna go outside and have a cigarette. We go outside. Uh, Dude, that that uh, whole. His mom wants you to leave. I'm just my mind's like unable to comprehend. Here, that. here was the thing we were talking about. I was like talking. I was like, we should go up the street because my brains are about to leak out of my fucking ears. <laughs> so I, we did. Not, I was like, I cannot go hack going back in that building. 
So yeah, we just like we went did. Up yeah, the we just went to a dive bar. You know, the actual comfort. Yeah, for us, best place to go. What's your best? Bet? And then Barnaby's Flying Circus. Came that sounds through. Like, oh my what? god! What? <laughs> what? Long story short, fucking Taylor girls show up wasted. They've been drinking for a bit. We go on this fucked up oh. adventure in the same two block radius trying to find that. this guy's but car. The Barnaby's Flying Circus was like twenty. 20 oh, cement yeah, trucks yeah. that came flying up the street like this cop was like you we gotta were, you can't fucking move that barricade you gotta run over all these drunk assholes and the the construction workers just like i gotta do what i gotta do <laughs> all the uh ozinga yeah, we were like we were like what the fuck is going on here and there's literally a motorcade just, of fucking cement mixers behind it doug's just and like, I was like either this is a bank job or yeah, either this is a big public works project or a bank heist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with bank heist. Yeah. I was like, uh, I was like, hey there, it's the greatest circus in the world, a motorcade of elephants, or it's a bank heist. <laughs> so um, and they they were all good. red with the the red and white stripes yeah, around the, the mixer, so they're spinning. Yeah. yeah. So Ozinga. you got like a fucking logistical nightmare of public works pe- personnel. Just fucking like shutting down traffic, directing traffic, fucking drunk people walking around, and we're trying to find this dude's fucking car <laughs> for like two hours. And it was really funny because I told him, "Did you park past this point?" He's like, "Oh no way!" He totally parked past that point. Like it was like one of the first things I said, maybe like a half hour, and I was like, "Did you park past this street?" Oh no way! He did. Ah, he was crazy. like two blocks past that. He's like, point. I don't know. Like that guy seems like a good guy, but he was definitely. Stefan's always writing that drunk dude situation. Fucking up. <laughs> like it, it turns out, like a lot of the time, you're you're writing literally. That drunk dude situation. Me and Stefan were fucking pretty much sober. Oh my god, we we're the soberest Everyone two was in there, screaming their heads off. Yeah, too. and it was like uh, like the dude who lost his car, like he was like dealing with it f- pretty well for a while, but then he started freaking out. I was like, "You guys are stressing me the fuck out," and I just like didn't say anything because I was like sober enough to be like this is not going to help the situation but in the back of my head i was thinking nobody cares what the fuck you think because you're the dumbass who got us in this stupid Although, ass situation i'm not all called uber give myself home right I'm, now I'm, I'm definitely not always right because when i saw slayer last week we all we got into the stadium all this other jazz and one of the guys says we, we two weeks ago yeah okay two weeks matter. ago one of the guys says does anyone know where we parked I look around. I just said, "Yeah, I do." I just just to calm everyone's nerves, because just to calm everyone's nerves, because I'm just like, "Yeah, somewhere over there." I like pointed off in the distance, obviously not actually knowing what I'm talking about. I was just like, "Somewhere over yonder," just so they could like chill out, because they were some dads, because it was dad rock. Let me put it to you this way: this not knowing where you parked if you're in an unfamiliar area is inexcusable because. It's the 21st fucking century. Open up Google Maps. Drop a fucking pin. Drop a pin. Yeah, we were. they were not ready for that. Everyone was too excited, and we were late by like three hours getting there. Because I told you that, right? We left at we left at like 5 o'clock, and the show started at 5. So we showed up, and only got to catch Lamb of God and Slayer. And yeah, and terrible. they were fucking lame. Yeah, Lamb of God was terrible. On that fucking note, let pause for a little bit of a breaky poo. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we'll be right back. Oh, throwing a lot of likes around there. So that's your podcast, huh? You've been listening to Radio Loud. You can find us on Podbean at radioloud.podbean.com. Or you can look us up, Radio Loud, on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. Or you can tweet us at Loud Podcast. Only use caps, please. All caps when you spell my damn name. name. (laughs) Uh, Okay, audio is up. And three, two. It's our only original segment. So, suggestion box. That sucked. That was the worst read in ever. Um, well, all I'm right. sorry, we're original. <laughs> um, I actually wrote this one yesterday with Steve O. Uh, it's called Urban Survival. 
uh, this urban survival is how to cope with alcohol withdrawal <laughs> when you're desperate and in the wild. It's it's kind of like uh, being in the bush and being starved of uh, water. You're dehydrated. Don't forget it's with bear grills. So what you do is you you go yeah Drink your piss. <laughs> urban survival with grill bears. <laughs> um, uh, Grer bills. Gare bills. He just collects. <laughs> he just collects collects Weber grills wherever he goes. <laughs> These Gare things are necessary for your survival. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just made him Australian. Yeah, uh, Grer bills is Australian. <laughs> okay, so we'll go with that. Bear Grills is is English. What? What do you? What do you? Hello. You you were just doing Bear Grills. And English. You're making it. You're what making him uh, obviously Australian. Wasn't well, Bear Grills actually Australian? No, he's he's, no, definitely he's, British. he's British. He was British he's Special SAS. Forces. It's funny seeing those bloopers and like him handing food to the guys behind the camera and <laughs> shit. Like, yeah, he was trying to like uh, they gutted a, a salmon on the episode that Barack Obama was with them, and they were like, uh, "Can I feed this to the president?" And, like no. the president doesn't get to decide for himself. No. They're like, no. Secret but Service is he like, ended up doing it. So that's uh, cool. I guess I never really watched Bear Grylls, so I so wouldn't really know. This was how to deal with alcohol withdrawal. So you go out to like a wings place where they've like fucking, <laughs> they've just got all the alcohol wipes afterwards, and you take the alcohol wipes and you squeeze them and then point your thumb at your mouth so it drips in <laughs> so it drips into your mouth it <laughs> illustrate it again <laughs> squeeze hard <laughs> that's how you fucking do it you want to fight alcohol withdrawals in the city do that or get Stand arrested up. and they'll give you the alcohol withdrawal pill dude yeah they uh, tried doing that to me in county uh, inter- yeah, you were just like I'm. You're just report. like I don't need that. I was like, yeah, I drink every day, but I don't need what you're trying to give me. That was at the time. He doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, interesting factoid. I actually learned uh, from uh, uh, Kevin Smith's little like PR campaign right now because he just suffered like a that massive heart attack. Heart attack. That was like a couple months ago, right? Wait, like, yeah, James was, Island, Bob, yeah. Kevin Smith. Yeah. yeah, he had a big heart attack. He's like, I'm living on borrowed time. Yeah, so he, had a woke moment. he was talking about, uh, I think it was on Rogan's podcast, fucking um, Jason Muse, just like like being on heroin and stuff like that. And the doctor trying to explain to him like what heroin withdrawal is like. And he's just like, uh, I could not like grasp it at the time. And I was just like, dude, just stop like doing that. But interesting thing I learned is that like a withdrawal from that, like you cannot die from an opioid withdrawal but you can die from an alcohol yep. withdrawal. Yeah. Like you can literally have a fucking heart attack and mm-hmm. die from an alcohol withdrawal. What? Yeah. It's fucking yeah. insane. Today I learned. Right. <laughs> T-I-L. <laughs> you're, you're, you're much less likely to die Hello, from Redditors. the alcohol. <laughs> it's the thing. The thing on the front end is much, right. much more likely to kill you on the other one. Yeah. But yeah, I thought that was like really interesting. Like I always thought that uh, you could like die from a... Like any type of withdrawal. I'm surprised you guys didn't know that. No. Well, well I know I, I knew really you could. I knew you much. could die from an alcohol withdrawal. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you just assumed that it was like every type mm-hmm. that could. Okay. I figured it was like similar. Uh, yeah. actually, you and I had a conversation about that when I was like first getting those chest pains when I came back from Arizona. Mm. We had a conversation, and it was like something about like your blood thickening back up and like having more trouble <laughs> fucking pumping it into your body or something. Like, <laughs> right, and that's why your chest pains are happening is because you're not drinking so much anymore. That's like, why you can't get piercings <laughs> when you're drinking. Right? It's not because that they're making a. It's not because you're making a bad decision and it's their moral compass. It's literally because they don't want to poke a needle through you and have blood just like spurting over. Yeah, place. Your blood gets thin. <laughs> yeah. Same with uh, same with tattoos, yep. man. You like, don't want you bleeding all they, over the they place. They really don't give a fuck about like bad decisions. They just don't want you fucking bleeding all bleeding over, all over I, their shit. It's more it's it's a health risk. Like when I got these uh, four stitches in my hand, I was drunk as shit. Blood was just everywhere, and then I taped it off and went partying for the night, and then I untaped it <laughs> on the outside of David's white car. I got a whole fucking and different just blood squirting everywhere. I was thinking, uh, I was just imagining you trying to fuck, and you're trying to get an erection, and you tape it off, and you you, you do the deed, and you're so drunk, you forget, and you wake up to just that purple dead dick. <laughs> <laughs> Who says it already is, man? I mean, 
purple dead dick. That sounds about right. Uh, you want to do one, Stefan? Yeah. Do you guys know who Don Cherry is? Don Cherry? Mm, no. You don't who, know who who's Don John Cherry? Cherry? Don Cherry. Should I? Do you do know you? who Don Cherry is, Steve-O? No. He's an announcer on NBC for hockey. Okay. Oh, I know the name. So this guy wears relatively ridiculous suits every time. He is from Canada. He was a Canadian coach. If you had watched any of the Stanley Cup stuff, you would have seen him. He's known for his outspoken and somewhat incoherent ramblings. And I like this man already. I picture him being our Canadian Cinematic Universe CCU, Nick Fury. <laughs> That's where you were going with it. Now I like that. I, I, I really, if I yeah. had brought my computer, I would have loaded a couple sound clips because this man is just as beloved as he is hated. He's like he's the true double edged sword. He's just well, a it's wild like card. right. He's like he's taking the risk to like entertain and going off the rails. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's the he doesn't know. I don't think he knows <laughs> he's doing it though. He's just a rambler <laughs> at heart. I think in his old age, he's kind of slipped away. I remember there was an Onion article about him drinking a ton of Robitussin and forgetting where he was. <laughs> dude, this guy knows how to fucking party. Right. Damn. Oh, well, let's get him on the show here. Dude. <laughs> and he, he has my favorite quote, which is, if my aunt was my, if my aunt had a penis, she'd be my uncle, which is basically just shooting down what if stories because people like to oh well if this happened yada 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 oh, right that's my favorite quote of his but oh that was like him shooting down those stories yeah he used to be a hockey coach and they i think they lost, yeah well they lost if in my the aunt had a dick she'd be my uncle <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> there's that yeah <laughs> but i think he was in the stanley cup finals and a bunch of reporters were proud of him about it and he made that comment but if we can load up some clips of him at some point You'll you'll see why he could be the CCU's Nick Fury. Yeah, but what would he say? What would he say to like the Wall and John Bo Buffet and uh, uh, what, uh, and the, the flaky croissant? The flaky <laughs> croissant. Yeah. Cheapskate is probably Cheapskate. my favorite. Yeah, I, I really think, like Cheapskate. I like flaky croissant, dude. Uh, the one that I listened to, yeah, the flaky croissant really fucking entertained me. So he's <laughs> the one like giving them their missions, <laughs> yeah. but they'd be the, like, yeah, I'll totally the, he'd be there. give them the missions, and they'd be incoherent ramblings that quickly get off topic of what they're actually supposed to be talking about, <laughs> and they'd have no idea what they're supposed to do. <laughs> they're like, right? well, what if, what if, well, what if this happens? And they'd be dressed in a like, ridiculous <laughs> poker suit where. And, Every time they'd have to like go do something, they'd just essentially Mr. Magoo their way through it. They'd yeah. just be completely oblivious so to them gotta actually th like helping, but they actually would end up doing the good that they need to do. We got to think yeah. of the variables for this mission. Like, what if this happens? And he's like, "Well, what, what if what if my aunt if my aunt had a dick, she'd be my <laughs> uncle." And then they just go out on their mission. I mean, all you have to do <laughs> is check out a little NBC special time called coach's corner which is hosted with don cherry and it's just the incoherent ramblings of a madman <laughs> <laughs> i mean isn't that like what a lot of hockey is the like, incoherent what, ramblings what, of a madman who's the older guy like, did he used to play did he get did he get his head slammed a little bit too many times i know he used to coach i actually don't know if he used to play he probably did who was that um, can you coach without playing at one point in your life i really don't think so i'm gonna double check you had to have so, uh, going off the hockey theme, I actually had another one from last night. This one's uh, Golden Knights. Oh, did you get a little oh. inspired by the Stanley Cup? Yeah, we were just like watching this. Like, yeah, we were at the wing place. I got a credit. And you watched it? Uh, no. How about we caught the opening it? ceremony. Let's just say yeah, that. Yeah, we caught that. And Steve-O's comments kind of like inspired this too. So, he's like part partially read on this one. Um, so, there was basically a projection of the whole... They had this big fucking thing where like the Golden Knight like called in the fucking archers and they were like yeah, shooting. They have the most ridiculous pregame thing it's I've ever Vegas seen. It's a Vegas thing. It's a Vegas thing. And I thought like like seeing some of those in the earlier season was like they were pretty cool. But uh, this one was like it ended literally like with the team's logo essentially just becoming a big hole in the ice, a projection of the hole, and then the lights go down. And I was just like, dude, what? Yeah, Steve will call it. was like, what is that? Just a big hole in the ice? And I thought like the, 
it was an actual hole in the ice where fucking somebody had like threw their sword down yeah. or something. But it was just basically half the court became a hole in the ice or uh, wherever the team's logo was projected. So the lights go down, and I was suggesting when the lights go up, two old men have s- set up a fucking ice shanty and they're ice fishing <laughs> on the court. <laughs> I like that though. That would be a funny pregame thing. <laughs> Fucking like Walter Matthau and John Lemon have set up as Grumpy Old Men Three. Well, we yeah. need to get Doug back out on the ice because last time I took him to a hockey game, he got to be the human hockey puck. Oh, last time I had seen and that fucking Niedermeyer from uh, Animal House yeah. was the one doing it. We got a couple months to go. We're going to have to go to some baseball games. How much did you win on that uh, pick and save gift card? $25, and I forgot to well, use it. he knocked it. down Wowie! all the pins, dude, Wowie! and we went there for free to I think that game. everybody... Aren't you supposed to get a car if you do that? <laughs> dude, this, this is the amateur event. off, dude. This is fucking... Uh, it was admirals, man. It was admirals. It wasn't... The, dude, this this That's event okay. is literally the uh, the. What you guys it? went there on slap. This is too. literally the yeah. equivalent of Will Ferrell fighting the bear in semi pro. Yeah, just to like <laughs> yeah. get people to come in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got on. The, I actually, I, I actually really like that movie. Got shot across the ice. I actually really like that movie. I, yeah. like, I think it was one of Will Ferrell's better movies. You've never been punched in the jejunum, have you? <laughs> uh, here's the facts on Don Cherry. He did used to play. He was not technically in the NHL. He was an AHL player. <laughs> oh, he was an Admirals League player. I, I almost, he played for this I dude played from blood. This dude played from 19, <laughs> 1950 to like nineteen seventy. He played for like the Hershey Bears and shit. Damn, that's a long time. The Hershey yeah. Bears. That's enough. Like in hockey years, that's enough time to become like an old man. Yeah, he's playing from nineteen fifty one to nineteen seventy two. Hockey careers are actually usually pretty long it's yeah. actually somewhat surprising but uh yeah for being like one of I the wish hardest I could, championships i wish too. i could share pictures of this guy with people outside of this is this is kind of what he looks like you see these ridiculous suits and attire oh my god he looks like Let's see. he looks like one of those dudes uh, that fucking evangelical uh priest from a tel- the Vic tel- Vic Vigel- the, the, the tel- Vic Vigel- burger <laughs> shit dude the Vic burger <laughs> shit dude <laughs> You've seen this guy before. He looks like oh, him, doesn't yeah. he? Coach's he corner. He kind of looks like him. Don Cherry. Now, God's he could be our Nick Fury. You. He could be our Nick Fury. That is... Father, mm. is that a pimp? <laughs> <laughs> I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Once. T- <laughs> I wish we had some clips queued up of him just rambling like a man. Yeah, man. we know you do, but we don't. I know. All right. Well, you should have done it if you wanted it. I, I mean, I just you're can't. literally the, the man with the audio in his hands for like piping... That, yeah, that I, kind of stuff. I can't then. bring the computer anymore. It's just too volatile. <laughs> we'll have that. Uh, what are, you, are you snapping? Mm-hmm. Live. <laughs> live. Snap live. into the fans. Live. Snap a good one. For Friday like, night. Delete that. Snap a good one. Okay. It's, um, your, favorite, it's your favorite dunces. So uh, this one is going off of the uh, the politician Thunderdome thing. Okay. You know, we are talking about like... Uh, after being this, expelled to the exiled lands, yeah. After the senators finish their term, like you have to sign up for this the term, knowing well that you will be expelled into the wastes to bring the 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 um, society to the society list, essentially. And um, after sending so many senators into the the wastes, they would essentially set up their own society, and it'd basically be like Thunderdome. And they'd have their own Senate where they elect two senators who want to like fight an idea. Whoever fucking just kills the other one, whoever kills the other one wins. So this one uh, being, it's like kind of theatrical in a sense. They're gonna have a musical guest. It's uh, Tupac enter, one Pac leave. (laughs) (laughs) This is actually a classic. Yes, this is this this is so classic. This is before. This is an old, old... This is a, an OG classic. I <laughs> right. don't even know how to describe this. A long time ago. And even before, far, far away. Even before I used to stay here, there was a Chinese restaurant that gave out a calendar for one month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right up here. Right? <laughs> it was a roller calendar for one... M- it's closed now. Yeah. yeah, right up here. But it was a roller... It, no it was more. like a roller bamboo calendar, and it was for one month, and I think on the back of it, you guys wrote that. Yeah. The like, drunken party nights of yesteryear. 
Yeah, I don't know where that came from, but it was just like, even before Tupac enter one o'clock leave. leave. Well, Why even... haven't I seen this before? <laughs> it seems so obvious now. <laughs> so but, this was even before. Um, this was waterfalls of water, huh? Yeah, waterfalls of water. So, way before that. So here's what I'm thinking. Basically, the real Tupac fights a hologram. Zombie Tupac would come back from the dead and fight his own hologram. <laughs> <laughs> And all the senators like fucking Bernie Sanders and his bondage gears like, oh, <laughs> kill that, uh, that technology, <laughs> get him, zombie Tupac. Ted Cruz is out there, just mediocre. <laughs> Ted Cruz is out there, but he just wears like zodiac signs all over him. He's like a, <laughs> he's like, like a, a zodiac killer. <laughs> he wears like a Riddler costume with zodiac <laughs> symbols all over it. And he's like over by a, um, a family, and it's a mother and their fully grown children. And it's like, hey, you guys, like, do you guys fuck? Like, we don't have porn or electricity out here. Could I watch <laughs> you guys, like, do this? <laughs> and then what would it be like? Anthony Weiner's out there. Trump Except plays he was like a mayor. He's not Joe. a senator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. His fucking crypt keeper yeah, hair and exactly, shit. Exactly, <laughs> and he has to fucking like he has to fucking just like breathe through a mask and shit and just, like, mediocre. <laughs> he's he's, he's Zane. Like, well, instead of I was fired. born. <laughs> we have the best policies. We out of all the wastelands. Our Thunderdome is the best. Best Thunderdome. <laughs> We're gonna build a wall around the Thunderdome. That way, uh, we could have the fights spill out uh, out of the Thunderdome. We can continue the diplomacy. But that was the that was the point of Thunderdome was um, uh, the world had ended, and they didn't want to have another cataclysm. So instead of uh, having these massive fights, they just had two people fight, and whatever the resolution of the fight was, that's right. What I mean, it's like a samurai duel. Eighteen thousand fucking people in the world killing off two of them is kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> is Vermin Supreme in attendance at Thunderdome, <laughs> or does he have a like a, a utopia with is, yeah mini horses and teeth brushing? <laughs> <laughs> He's the he's the oasis everyone's looking for. <laughs> it's like uh It's like a water world though, where they're looking for land except Vermin Supreme has oil or something ridiculous. <laughs> he's got the guzzoline. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking excellent. I don't know where the fuck you pulled that one. Like, dude, that's the only right that I had this week that literally just had a title. Um, oh, so you got just some ridiculous. I guess this could be a preemptive thing to the how the um the world ended in this timeline <laughs> that we've created. I have a theory about how this, this is timeline too- ends and re- is-, <laughs> is reborn. This is called Crash at the Spank Bank. <laughs> so basically, it's like the fucking uh, the subprime mortgage crisis, but with uh, a spooge. So everybody's fucking jerked off so much that their 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 jizz has become useless, and um, when people uh, <laughs> you want you want to <laughs> yeah, uh. <laughs> but isn't that the premise of what's the one film where the guys can't have kids and there's Keeping like with the one la- there's one last child, isn't that a um, there children a post- of men yeah. Yeah, where they have they that have kid, one like the kid. first kid, and, like, and the UN's just like, oh, we got it. Yeah. Get this, get this and then the game. rebels are all trying to get him and all that, too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't With, actually uh, watch that. But Clive Owen. I didn't actually watch it. It's a it. really good fucking movie, But dude. isn't that, that's a very similar premise. The men can't splooge. <laughs> yeah, but not because they fucking beat off. Except <laughs> they just beat <laughs> right? well, Masturbation well, became so addictive. There is some sort of form of pornography that became so good. They just literally... VR. Did, Everyone's just hooked did up. Did you see that thing that hooks up to the PS4 and it just goes... Like, did you see that video of that? <laughs> what? You want to gesture that again? Just, what, just, was it, it hooks up to the PS4? Pump it just goes, goes over the... Yeah, it just goes around. Sync to the, the prano. And it just... Bam. 
Seriously, uh, to go. Could so you, could you imagine be a lot of cops walking into houses? Just, oh, we got another one. <laughs> Wrong house. <laughs> could you imagine? No, just fucking, dead. Uh, He's dead and it's still running. Getting the insurance <laughs> for that? Like, oh god, <laughs> we got another one. <laughs> 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 fucking ripped his penis clear off. <laughs> the, the cop. The, it's like a noir film. He's outside smoking a cigarette. Just like <laughs> it's rough out here. <laughs> I wouldn't go in there if I was you, kid. <laughs> So yeah, the, the, okay. So we've set the stage essentially. So uh, um, I didn't get to the punchline. It was like masturbating so much, like you're trying to cash it. You're trying to get your sperm pension, but uh, all they have is uh, in, uh, instead of being <laughs> in a cash, uh, you instead of being fertile, you just got bunk spunk. <laughs> this would all be sponsored by Zuck, right? <laughs> Or the Sackmaster this Dynasty. Is, this is Zuck's. this is Facebook's is Facebook's future. VR yeah. and hydraulic pumps. Yeah, it <laughs> will literally be the Zuck. The Zuck the machine. Zuck. I actually, the Zuck pump. Uh, I actually have that uh, here still. Um, the Zuck. Oh no, I don't. It's uh. Zucked off. <laughs> there we go. This is the future. Of uh, social yeah, media. W- <laughs> For those of you who can't tell, like, look, his mouth is not moving. Zucked off. Zucked off. <laughs> zucked off. It sounds so good. <laughs> I know. It sounds like he's actually saying it. All right. Crash at the Spank Bank that leads to the Thunderdome Society where the senators <laughs> fight to the death. I can see that prophecies. being the end. And there'd be like a pre- the, the prequel movie would be a noir film with Detective John Johnson. And then you have to and do the urban just, survival where like, you're going through uh, fucking, you're going to be in the post-apocalyptic wings joint, digging through the fucking dumpster, uh, and just trying to squeeze. No, it would be, it would be like Blade Runner. Alcohol. It would be like Blade Runner. He'd just be like, I don't know who's jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's VR jerking off. But he's, and then it turns out he's one of them. He's just trying to keep it a secret the whole time. And he, that's how he dies. Like some sort of sixth sense ending. He's yeah. like, I didn't realize that this was actually <laughs> what I sort, was doing. <laughs> some sort of fantasy I signed up for years ago. Dude, yeah, that he reminds is total me. Recalled. <laughs> that reminds me. I was like, uh, we, me and Steve were walking through Southridge earlier, and I like pointed at these things. I, they were like these lit, lit up booths, and I was like, what the fuck <laughs> is that? And Steve was like, oh, it's the, it, the that's VR shit. And what? I was yeah. yeah. It's like a kiosk where VR, you can go and play b- VR, like VR bus, shit. bus stop VR. No. <laughs> <laughs> so so <laughs> I I was just uh, <laughs> I was just taken off of like some some old man comes across this. He's seen it. He's seeing it for the first time, and he goes up and he plunks his money down on the table. He's like, I'd like. One blowjob fantasy, please. And they're just like, what? And it's like, you had made like one deep seated blowjob fantasy, please. And like, sir, that's not how it works. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing a VR simulation of a bus stop where you just sit and wait for a bus to come. But the guy actually just the misses mall. his bus. <laughs> Because you know how they have like train simulator and all that crap. It's just bus. It's bus stop simulator, and he's no, all VR'd man. in. There's actually a video game. Uh, there's a. It's a class. I think it was an NES game originally that Penn and Teller made. It's called. Um, oh fuck! What is it called? Like it's like Desert Bus. I think that's what it's called, and it's just. Oh a, yeah, I've actually read about that. All it is. Is the fucking? It's a bus going from some city to Las Vegas, and it's just it, a super long stretch of highway. Yeah, it's just eight hours of you having to drive this bus, and you can't stop. You can't like pause the game what? in order to like win the game. And you, you just you have can't to like, drive through. You the can't entire like thing. fall asleep at the wheel. You know, like buzz out and go off the road. You like gotta change the channel. You actually like it. Keeps, but it's just a straight shot for yeah, like eight hours. It pretty much like it makes you like. I think it like. <laughs> It, it'll gradually like, careen one way. So if you're if you're slipping and not paying attention, it, you <laughs> you fall asleep at the it. wheel. Yeah, yeah. So they this was like an NES game when it originally came out, like shitty pixels, like worse than yeah. uh, they remade it. Sixty six at the arcade. They remade it as a VR game, dude. So, so now you got to sit in VR for eight fucking hours just to pass this fucking... No, no, that's not how you do it. Like, first, you have to get a catheter inserted. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I got to piss. <laughs> I'm going to lose right. this bus full of yeah. nuns. <laughs> <laughs> going to play the slut. 
<laughs> you know, some sad fuck actually has to do that as a job. Just sit eight hours and drive from Las Vegas to with a catheter. Spoen oak. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, that fucking uh, Tom Green bit where he had the fucking big canister of grape juice and a catheter and like another canister. He's like, I'm going to move all of this <laughs> into this. And he's literally just on the sidewalk in New York and he's just drinking the grape juice and peeing it into the other one. <laughs> that, uh, that, was that. Ge- that was some genius shit. Like some of Tom Green's bits where it wasn't just like him going, ooh, 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 ah, ooh. <laughs> like some of his bits were like pretty funny. I wonder if he wrote them or somebody else. <laughs> well, really he, his like to. his uh, it was shit, like his rapping, his shit started was in the style the of that... like uh, CKY, where he was just making his own tapes. Right. Was he the one that had uh, the interview where he said he he blew it all, like he had enough money and he could have just coasted easy, but he blew it all. Was he one of those guys? I don't know. I never really. Uh, I would have been up, one of those dudes. Looked up the retrospective of Tom Green <laughs> on the on the CKY kick. I actually, was watching. Because Johnny Knoxville did a hot ones apparently lately, oh, and I good. saw yeah. some I saw some clips where he it was basically explaining how to do a prank and how CKY versus Jackass. What the did, level of prank is is vastly different. Where CKY is what did gets Sean, to a point where it's malicious, where Jackass is not malicious. Like, no, no, uh, uh, it, no. They weren't talking. I watched the interview. They were talking about YouTube prankers. Where yeah, no, uh, but it it, it kind of pans in a similar way where some of CKY shit was more malicious versus jackass. I could stuff. see that, but honestly, I mean, compared to the the I really want to drive this home because like I did watch the interview and this was like said in a very specific way. Sean Evans asked him about YouTube prankers specifically where like you have people like scaring people thinking that people are like terrorists or they're going to die oh, like or the guys something throwing like that. bombs at people and shit and running yeah. away. Or uh, the fucking dude who was, like, in England who was, like, splashing liquid on people's yeah. faces when there was, like, an acid attack acid scare, wave. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just want to say that that is not a, like, prominent thing that terrorists do. Uh, it kind of, like, got picked up like it was. Well, especially just, over like, there because of their... It was, uh, like, uh, English street gangs. Yeah. Uh, it had nothing to do with like immigrants or anything right, like yeah. that. Like there is, uh, I think it was H three H three recently that uh, they introduced this new segment called Ethan Go to Your Room, where they go back and talk about things that they said in the past that were just completely incorrect. Incorrect, yeah. Which I is like kind of that. nice. That's a cool. Yeah, that's a cool way to do it. So um, basically, what Knoxville said was the with Jackass, they always made sure that the joke was coming around, so the impact was on them, on the crew, and on the crew, yeah. yeah, and not like the victim of the prank. The but like on CKY, they literally like diarrhea on some people eating. <laughs> no, that was on, it was on a window where people were eating on yeah, the other side of the window. <laughs> okay. Get but your they CKY still diarrhea shit together, my friend. They still of, diarrhea. Uh, I just, ooh, they they ruined my meal. <laughs> literally a week and a half ago, we just watched uh, Rab himself run full speed and right. shit again. That epic, epic fucking Rab, scene. dude, I, that guy in the Easter. Just some things guy. you don't see in life. You never I'll, see a man running down the street on, full I'm speed. Hold on, I'm going to let you continue. shit. I'm going to let you continue, but remember when Rab did the scavenger hunt in Viva La Bam and he had a microwave, that fucking dog shit? <laughs> <laughs> that whole the scavenger the dog. hunt Yeah, that was shit was hilarious, though. Dude. Remember uh, when he had that fork and he gave the Kiki little pizza of Bam Bam? Kiki. They just don't make TV like that anymore. And then no, fucking Viva <laughs> Oh, there's another guy that we lost. Apparently, the... That kind of, uh, that sucked. Uh, a bunch of stuff that he did that was like kind of just like old and pervy came to light. Dirt like, baggish. Yeah. yeah but, like, was, that's was what before, you expected though. out of him. He was always like, where are the nice girls at? And shit like that. Like, you're famous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I got to say, though, they definitely do not make stuff like Jackass and Viva La Bam and all that. That just, right. that just, I mean, there was that, uh, Mac. did you guys ever check out that Dirty Sanchez crew out of the UK? I checked out. They're I didn't like check a out hardcore that hardcore version of Jackass. I didn't check that out. I know I knew there was the Norwegian duo. Oh, it was like two brothers. Yeah, and four then of them. Tyler, the creator, had their little prank squad, but it was not the same um, level. Dirty Loiter Sanchez, squad. 
Dirty Sanchez was around the same time as Jackass was coming out, and MTV tried hitting them here in the U.S., but they were mainly in the U.K. because I they were from I the U.K. I s- think I saw some of that. They were nut jobs, dude. Like, they would drive, like, nails through their hands. Yeah, they're and, like, nuts, but they didn't have They were, this... like, hardcore, but they didn't have that, like, lovable... Yeah, they didn't have the same charm. Yeah. Like, uh, the thing... That's the... That's... Let's go back to Knoxville statements about pranking and... The thing I loved about Jackass was that when it first hit MTV, I was just an unsuspecting teen. Yep. I was watching it, and I was laughing so hard... My mom came from the other room, like, watching the football game, and, like, came, and she's like, what are you laughing so hard at? And I was like, just watch this. <laughs> and then she starts fucking laughing yep. at it. And then my dad comes in her and is like, what are you guys laughing at? Drags everyone yeah, in. It just drags everybody into the thing. And, like, even though it's, like, some of it's, like, vile, vile. and perverse, it's, like, I'm literally sitting there as, like, a 13-year-old kid with my very Christian mother just absolutely laughing, laughing at this fucking I mean, we freak saw, show. We saw Jackass 3 together. That was a that was a hoot and holler. Dude, Dude's getting kicked in the nuts by mules, dropped out of fucking Porta John's out of cranes. So they're trying to pin the mule on <laughs> The fart box what? for uh the fart box. <laughs> Did you just vomits in the fishbowl? <laughs> <clears throat> I think my favorite thing that Knoxville ever did wasn't a stunt. It was the introduction where he's just like in a cape and a top and he says, ladies and gentlemen, a puppet show. <laughs> and then they and bring out Pontius, Pontius with the mouse on his. <laughs> all right. All right. So uh, I, I like those guys. I feel like we might have put some words in Johnny Knoxville's mouth. At least I did that. He didn't say, but we, we got to get away from uh, yeah. being like, oh, this was funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we do. But it was funny. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> and they don't make it like that anymore. I don't know. They, they anybody, really don't. I make don't it know like anything that that's like that. That's the uh, that's the intent of uh, Action Point. That uh, I was talking to Steve about this the other night. I did not know that Action Point was a real place. Basically, oh, the, Action the Point movie was that like they a just real. Made? Yeah, it was. It's based on a real place where the guy who owned it just let the kids run amok, basically. See, that's the thing, Johnny Knoxville. When he does movies, he actually picks. An interesting subject matter once you go a little deeper. Well, Jesus into Christ, it. the fucking ringer with him? God damn. That Although was... he did do a movie with Jackie Chan that was just totally ridiculous. I forgot what it's called. What? I would love to see that. <laughs> right? I don't remember I'll, uh, that. I'll look it up. <clears throat> I uh he Shanghai had a really good one. He had a really good line yeah. in uh The Dukes of Hazard. They were like talking to some he was uh, with Sean Everett Scott. Is that his name? Stifler. Stifler. Yeah, Stifler. I don't know his <laughs> yeah. fucking name. Let's Sean get, it. Let's get it straight. He's so, Doug Glatt. <laughs> right, Doug Glad, Doggy. That's straight up how Dougie. I felt. That's Dougie. how I felt on I'm hockey Dougie. night, just or on the <laughs> hockey cam night. She's like, I can't do any of this. The goon. <laughs> the goon. The goon. Um. So, uh, there was a really good line in that movie. They were talking to this fucking dude. They just, they're just like in science garbs, like or like doctor oh, garbs. Yeah. And the they're trying to get away from this dude. They're in some place that they're not supposed to be in. They're like. Oh yes, we're Japanese scientists, and uh, we'd like to offer you a job. How's forty thousand yen a year sounds like? And the guy's just like, sounds so, like forty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> sounds like forty bucks. <laughs> so the movie with uh, Jackie Chan and Johnny Knoxville is called Skip Trace. The a short blurb about the plot is a detective from Hong Kong teams up with an American gambler to battle a notorious Chinese criminal. Overall. It had the giggles of a typical Jackie Chan film. Johnny Knoxville, I don't think, got to play necessarily to his strengths. But I watched the whole thing. I think it was on Netflix or Hulu. I liked him as the three-headed, uh, the two-headed, like uh, two, the two-headed alien from Men in Black. Yep, it was yep. pretty good. Just like Johnny Knoxville talking to himself. Yep, just was, playing the 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 Duncy character. Yep. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. But actually, in the whole, you idiot, like, you the grand scale of it, uh, uh, like, even Steve-O, when he was on Hot Ones, he uh, got a phone call from Knoxville, and uh, he has But did Steve-O call Knoxville? I don't think he did. No, he got a phone call from, from Knoxville during the interview. Yeah, and no, I thought they'd do the vice versa, though. No. I thought they. I thought it would be reciprocated. Anyways, Steve-O gets a call from Knoxville during the show and picks it up, and, like, Knoxville, like, recounted that. He was like, what the fuck were you doing picking up the phone call? But, like, Steve-O, like... Like, they all, like, really respect Knoxville, and he, like, referred to him as, like, the captain. 
basically. He's their dad, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what a dad to have. Right? Knoxville has like a <laughs> fucking like 16, 15, 16 year old daughter. Something like that. I like, believe it. Full grown teenager. Actually, she might be older now, but. <clears throat> what a father to have. I anyway, have, we love you, Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, we we all love you. We grew up with you. You taught us how to be huge inspiration. Not men, but just a bunch of little jackasses. fucking dumbasses, <laughs> right? A bunch of jackasses, not dumbasses, because that's the hotter sauce, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that wing place. Yeah, let's go get some more wings. <laughs> yeah, let's get some. I gotta rock a PP. In the words of Jake Pine, let's uh let's do one more. Uh. And then we could probably, yeah, we'd probably call it. Call suggestion box rambling box today. So um, <laughs> last, my last right for this week is. We didn't do um, albums, though. So. We could do that. I, did, yeah, I don't yeah. have an album. This I week. do. Okay. Although I'm not sure if I should. Oh, never. Maybe we should just save it for next week so you're not just the only one talking about music. Anyways, uh, this last right is called Puzzles Without Knowing the Picture. So, like, basically being able to go and, like, get a puzzle made and give it to somebody. And you just give them a puzzle, and they're putting it together, and they, you're just slowly realizing that the puzzle putting you're putting together is your dad just giving it to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Hey, I got a gift for you. It just comes in an all-black box. It's, like... Completely sealed with plastic wrap. You have no idea what the image is. There's no visual indicators. Just a right. completely black box. Your friend gets to you. It'll literally take you fucking years to it's, do it. It just says ten thousand pieces on it, <laughs> and you have a table set up in the back room, and you're just slowly piecing it together. It your father you're giving like... it to your mother, or it's your friend giving it to your mother, <laughs> <laughs> the friend who gifted it to you. <laughs> and it's a sectional. It's like a split screen of both. <laughs> You have to bring them both together. One's like shitty what and granny. No. It's a Polaroid. You get that one together, and then you start working on the other one. It's super HD, like 4K. <laughs> oh, how about this? They're both the exact same quality. So it's like, Dad, you were in on this? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Uh, we're at... Uh, well over an hour and a half here. You want to... Do you guys want to do albums? Do you have an album? I do not have an album. Like, steve doesn't know the fucking format. He just showed up to fucking yeah. fill it's in for It's a suggestion box and an album. Did you listen to an album this week that was new? Or something that you caught your ear? Nah. No? I mean... All the punk music I listen to, but we don't... No, we're not going to get into that. <clears throat> I mean, you can get into that. I've talked about a different form of music every week, pretty much. Although this week is... Nah, I just really gotta pee. <laughs> yeah, let's take a break. Or potentially, if we don't come back, we ended the show. Right. Yeah. Oh, I gotta pee so bad. <laughs> Tell me why you keep fooling little coquettes. Making...